On paper, the EasyPress or JMAX seemed too good to be true. So with a healthy dose of skepticism, we ran some tests. And here's what we found. As always, before we get started, this grinder was gifted to us by Easy Presso, no strings attached. All they said was, and I quote, we would love to have your opinion on the JMAX grinder. We value every feedback from the beloved user. So we've used the JMAX every day for the past three weeks, and here's our honest opinion. Actually, hold on a second, just a couple more things. You may not know this, but it's an absolute nightmare importing anything into India. So if we didn't have help from the lovely folks at Benki Brewing Tools, a lot of these videos just wouldn't be possible. So a big shout out to them. They've also been kind enough to hook our viewers up with a discount code. So if you're in India and you're looking to buy some coffee gear, check the details in the description below. Lastly, a huge shout out to Bloom Coffee Roasters for sending us some delicious coffee that was used to do all of the tests for this review. Definitely check them out. Again, link in the description below. Okay, on to the review. Having been in design for over 15 years, our obsession with details and minutia should be quite evident by now. So today, we scrutinize and pick apart the EasyPresso JMAX, both literally and figuratively, to see if we have indeed found ourselves the new hotshot hand grinder. Let's start with aesthetics. This is a good looking grinder that's clearly been built with quality in mind. Right from the material choices, to the finish, to the overall heft, everything feels premium. It's sleek yet substantial, and we like that the adjustment ring doesn't protrude as much as it does on the K-series grinders, and it's nice that the catch cup is the same width as the grip. While the wider ones with the dosing bell on the JE Plus and the K Plus are very functional, they do detract from the overall visual appeal. Now, I know some people prefer the silver, but we absolutely love the sandblasted gunmetal finish on this. It's a few shades darker than Apple's Space Gray, and it looks sick. The cold, surgical, precision-cut metal juxtaposed with a warm, organic wooden knob just ties this whole design together. Moving on to functional design. Since we'll be looking at grind quality in detail a little later on, let's focus on user experience here. If you ignore the mind-boggling complexities of Burr geometry and their impact on particle distribution and throughput, hand grinders are fairly simple devices. And when you go north of the 150 quid price point, we as customers have come to expect a certain level of evenness and consistency from the grounds produced. This has forced brands to focus more deeply on UX and really sweat the small stuff to set themselves apart. So let's break down and analyze the various parts of the JMAX to see what's good and what's not. Firstly, the lower diameter compared to say the Commandante is very welcome. The slimmer profile and textured grip make it much easier to grind and you also have an additional grip band for those stubborn lighter roasts. It's a good balance between comfort and hopper size, which is around 35 to 40 grams of coffee. The wooden knob is also very comfortable and the longer crank is an absolute godsend, especially at the espresso side of things. It makes it much easier to grind with the aggressive 48 mm burrs. Next up is the magnetic catch cup, which is very nifty. And talking about sweating the small stuff, this additional lip here prevents the cup from being removed at an angle. Why is this important, you may ask? Okay, imagine you're grinding some coffee and you happen to be holding a little lower on the body. If it wasn't for this lip, you could accidentally release the cup and cause a right mess. It's the little details like this that make a big difference. Just make sure when you're snapping the cup back that the magnets have aligned and engaged before letting go. You'd be surprised at how easy it is to make this mistake and have the cup fall and get damaged. This next one is a real game changer, the external adjustment ring. It's crazy how quickly you get used to this and start getting annoyed at grinders that don't have it. They may not be the first to have done this, but their implementation of it is the best that we've tried. And the sound of these clicks is just ASMR gold. 
You also get the 8.8 .8 micron per click granularity and 90 clicks per rotation to really dial in those shots. On the flip side, you have to go through over 200 clicks to get from espresso to say pour over. And here again, we see good design make this a little more bearable. Most grinders have numbered markings, but you usually can't keep track of rotation count. That's where this neat little indicator comes in handy. At first glance, it looks like a funky little arrow that shows you which number you're on, but it actually serves as a dual indicator. Look closer and you'll see that it looks like a tiny stack of bricks. And with every rotation, the dial obscures one layer of these bricks showing you exactly where you're at. So you don't have to keep going to the zero position to find the setting that you want. For example, a grind setting of one, five, two, is where the arrow is at two clicks past five and its top layer is fully hidden. The next big one is cleaning. Being able to dismantle and reassemble a grinder easily is clutch and the J-Max truly excels here. Start by making sure that you're at least two rotations coarser than where the burrs touch. Push the inner burr up with one hand and unscrew the knurled thumb nut with the other. Knock out the upper bearing and cap and the inner burr attached to the shaft along with the spring and the lower bearing should slide right out. You can go a step further and unscrew the fixed burr section by rotating it clockwise as it's reverse threaded to prevent loosening during use. This now gives you full access for a deep clean and we don't know of any other grinder that does this, at least not so conveniently. Are there any other hand grinders that allow you to remove the fixed burr without fiddling with screws or worrying about alignment? Let us know in the comments below. Now, we think this is a really smart design choice as it not only allows one to easily swap out old burrs for new ones, but also allows Easy Presso to sell alternative burr sets in the future. Okay, once fully disassembled, you can wipe, brush, and blow out all the parts and just as easily reassemble it. One thing to avoid is removing the adjustment ring. If you keep turning it counterclockwise, it will eventually come off, but it's tricky to put back on and one can easily cross thread and damage the delicate threads that allow for the 8.8 .8 micron fine adjustments. We recommend deep cleaning once a month to remove any buildup of residual oils and keep your brews tasting great. But note that Easy Presso clearly say to avoid any water during cleaning whatsoever. Once you put all the pieces back together, you'll want to calibrate. Calibration is the process of making sure that the burrs lock when the adjustment dial reads zero and all of the layers of the arrow are visible. Start by setting the adjustment dial to the zero position, then push the inner burr up all the way and tighten the thumb nut as much as you can. Now, you may need to turn the adjustment dial a little coarser to be able to tighten the thumb nut a little bit more to make sure that the burrs fully lock at the zero position. But once that's done, you can go back to a setting that you used before and you'll know that it's exactly the same as it was before you pulled it apart for cleaning. That's it, it's that simple. Now coming to the negatives, or in the case of this grinder, minor niggles. Firstly, one thing that does make us a little uncomfortable is that these threads are exposed on the inside. Coffee dust and particles get lodged in there and build up over time. And the fact that these threads are lubricated make it even harder to clean. We're just wary that it may jam at some point and damage the threads, but we'll just have to wait and see. Next, let's talk retention. This may seem odd as hand grinders usually have negligible retention, but the combination of this lip and the disc below the burrs means there's a lot of surface area for ground coffee to cling to, especially at finer settings. At a setting of 150, we brushed out nearly 0.5 grams of retention, which is quite high for a hand grinder. It is worse with some beans than others and RDT almost completely eliminates this issue, but we are skeptical about recommending it as Easy Presso don't seem particularly keen on having water anywhere near this grinder. Another minor one to keep in mind is that the J-Max does stand tall and relatively lean, so it is easier to tip over than say a shorter, more stout Commandante for instance. Lastly, while we did say we love the color, we've already noticed that there are spots where this coating has chipped off, so we'll have to just wait and see how it holds up over time. And before we wrap up the segment, let's quickly talk about accessories. Most brands don't give you much more than just the grinder. So to see a good travel case, cleaning brush, grip band, and a nifty little blower is a welcome surprise that really elevates the entire product experience. Okay, so far we're clearly very impressed, but none of this matters if it falls short on grind performance. After all, that is the most important thing. 
So to see what these 48 mm titanium coated burrs are capable of, we split this section into three parts, speed, particle distribution, and taste. But before we get into that, these in-depth videos are a result of hours of research, testing, and brewing, as our philosophy has always been to create useful, actionable content, as opposed to surface level reviews that often just list out specs. So it would make a huge difference if you liked and subscribed as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. This grinder is fast. Since different people grind at different speeds, we thought it would be interesting to look at the number of rotations and not just the time it takes to get 18 grams of coffee through at an espresso setting of 150. This typical dose for a double shot took 76 rotations, which translates to just 38 seconds at a normal speed like this. Going into frenzy mode, I was able to churn out 18 grams in under 30 seconds, which is pretty insane for a hand grinder. Just for comparison, the Commandante at a similar setting of 10 clicks took 170 rotations or a minute and 24 seconds to complete. There is a caveat, however. While the J-Max is considerably quicker, it is also substantially harder to grind. And this becomes very evident if you like pulling shots with lighter roasts like we do. Just something to be aware of. Next, we did control sift tests using the Kruv to check the spread between 1000 and 400 microns at a typical pour over setting. Shout out to Kruv for sending us this amazing tool. Stay tuned for more about this on our channel. The sifter was shaken at roughly the same velocity 150 times with taps every 25 shakes to dislodge any particles that are stuck to the corners. As you can see, when compared to the Commandante, the J-Max yielded very respectable results with a slightly wider spread producing more fines and marginally more boulders. Let's start with Espresso. It's not surprising that EasyPresso markets the J-Max as an espresso grinder as it truly excels in this respect. Dialing in is a breeze with the 8.8 .8 micron per click adjustment and the 48mm titanium coated burrs are capable of producing some delicious shots with a lot of clarity and sweetness. The taste profile is in line with what you can expect from conical burrs of this size. You get more pronounced acidity, which really makes the fruity notes shine, and a little less body compared to, say, 65mm flat burrs on the Eureka Minio XL, which produces rounder, more chocolatey shots. The results in the cup are impressive to say the least, and you will not be disappointed. Coming to brewed coffee, we're happy to report that the J-Max is no slouch in this department either. You can brew some really tasty balanced pour overs with this grinder. We just had to grind a little coarser than the Commandante to get similar results, and this is in line with what the SIF test showed. The brews had slightly less clarity compared to the Commandante, but overall, this is a very capable filter coffee grinder and we're quite comfortable calling it an all-rounder with an espresso skew. This grinder punches way above its price, both in terms of build quality and performance. We found it really hard to say anything bad about it. So if you have 170 quid or about 18,000 rupees to spend and you're in the market for a hand grinder, then we highly recommend you check out the J-Max. You won't regret it. So that's it for this one. We hope you enjoyed this review. Now we'd love to hear from you. Which grinder do you use? What are your first impressions of the J-Max and do you plan to buy it? Let us know in the comments below. As always, a massive thank you to our Patreon subscribers. Thank you to our YouTube subscribers. And lastly, thank you so much for watching and brew Aramse.